creating smooth, scrollable, interactive data visualizations like the ones you see on the New York Times or the pudding used to feel almost untouchable. In case you're not familiar with it, scrolly telling is a web design technique that uses scroll-triggered animations, transitions, and interactions to create immersive and engaging stories. To create these pieces, in the past, you needed years of JavaScript experience, mastery of libraries like d3.js, and honestly, a lot of patience. I've always been fascinated by those scrolling pieces, but for the longest time, I kept thinking, it's too much work, too much code, and I don't have time. Until recently, I had a light bulb moment. What if I used an AI coding agent to bring my vision to life without the drudgery of low-level JavaScript? So in today's video, I'm diving into what I believe is one of the best use cases for Vibe coding, building scrolling data visualizations. I'll be showing you step-by-step step how I created this project about AI energy consumption, turning abstract data and isolated facts into an engaging, scorable story. The reason why AI coding agents can be so helpful with this type of projects is that you can immediately see whether something is working or not, so you can get immediate feedback and tweak things along the way with the help of your AI agent, without getting distracted by the nitty-gritty of JavaScript packages and and responsive CSS styling. Maybe you love it, but I don't. We'll be using d3.js, which is a powerful library for creating interactive data-driven visualizations on the web. And for AI coding agent, I'll be using Cursor, but honestly, you can use any AI coding tool you prefer or have access to. It can be GitHub Copilot, Cloud Code, or even ChatGPT. Personally, I find the tool matters less than how you actually use it and guide it to achieve what you need. All right, every project starts with a motivation. My idea came from a blog post recently by Mistral that gives an analysis of environmental footprint of their AI models. I found it quite intriguing, given that other leading companies building and deploying AI models are largely quiet when it comes to how much energy actually goes into training these massive models and how much energy is used every time you or I ask a question, and where does that energy come from? Then I stumbled across an excellent MIT technology review article that broke down the math behind AI's energy footprint. So I thought this is a quite complex topic that most people don't know enough about, so it's a perfect topic for visual storytelling. And hopefully it sheds some light into this topic and makes it more tangible and easy to understand. Now, I'll be honest, my first go at creating storytelling visually with Cursor was a complete flop. I did a test on an employment data set I found, and I thought, piece of cake, I could just let the AI agent do all the hard work for me, just throw the Excel sheet into Cursor, tell it to make a scrolling visualization, and let AI do the magic. The result, however, was underwhelming, to say the least. As it turns out, the AI happily invented data out of thin air, built a genetic chart with some randomly generated data, and called it a day. It didn't even tell me which data was real and which data was made up, and all the generated insights were basically nonsense. So I've learned that I had to do the actual thinking and craft the narrative myself. Coding agent is a tool that can accelerate the work, but it apparently doesn't replace thinking. So after that failed attempt, I came up with a clearer process. So first, I gather all the relevant data and facts around this topic. You can use AI to help you research this as well. And then we organize all the insights and craft a logical storyline. Then we can go ahead and set up the project directory and add all the data files we need for our visualization. And once that's done, we just need to prompt cursor and iterate. And finally, we can deploy the website to be able to share it with others. Of course, this part is optional. So for the first step, gathering data and facts, I used ChatGPT to pull together some facts and numbers that are otherwise scattered across the research papers and on the internet. So here's the exact prompt I used. Create a data story on energy consumption of AI models, including training and inference with clear data insights, using latest research and articles, citing correct sources, I want to use this narrative for my storytelling project. 
and include in the storyline five to seven narrative points in logical order, include relevant data and equivalents of those data to make things relatable to a layperson, include also visual elements to illustrate each narrative point, for example, charts, images, transitions, etc. Some relevant sources you can use. So here I pasted some links over here just in case it's helpful. So after a few minutes, this is the response from ChatGPT. And I find some of the points quite relevant and interesting, but I still want to dive into the research papers myself, did some fact checking and added extra information that I found interesting. Then I basically just reorganized and refined them into a complete storyline in a document in my Notion page. Each narrative point contains a header, so the main insights that I want to tell the reader, and then some visual elements or data visualization to back it up. And optionally, I also added a few parts where I wanted some specific interactivity or what kind of visual elements I want to include, like charts or images and so on, and which exact data files I want to use to create these charts. So crafting this whole storyline to me is the most time consuming part because I need to understand and process things myself. So this is in fact the hardest part. To improve this storyboard further with more detailed instructions for the AI coding agent to follow, I actually run it through ChatGPT another time. I just asked ChatGPT to improve this storyboard, and I must say, AI is so much better at articulating all my ideas and instructions than I can do myself. I also like that it breaks the story down clearly into different scenes with some interesting titles and even adds an acceptance checklist at the end for me. So we'll just use this detailed version as input for cursor later. And then I go ahead and set up a project directory and added all the necessary data files into this folder. So I moved in here a few CSV files that contain the data needed for the graphs um, in my story. Now to feel like a professional app developer, we'll also initialize a repository for this project for version control and for deployment of this app later through GitHub. And here is the fun part. In Cursor, I made a prompt. So instead of making a vague prompt, uh, like make me a storytelling visualization, I gave it a pretty specific instruction. I basically pasted my entire storyline that we prepared over here. We already did all the hard work, so this should have all the points we want to mention in our story. Then I just run this query, got a tea for myself, and came back after a few minutes. After some time working with AI coding agents, I do think it's important to check the plan, the initial plan proposed by the agent, and read through all the steps the AI is doing to confirm things are on the right track before we accept all. Now that the app is running, we can check our visualization by clicking on this localhost link. So this is the first version that Cursor comes up with. The first iteration is most likely not perfect, but don't worry, we just iterate and tweak things until we're happy with the end result. We see a catchy title at the top, and scrolling down, we have the impact of training. This animation is quite cool. We also have the cost of inference compared to trainings, a case study of GPT-40's energy consumption, a case study from Mistral, and which factors drive energy consumption. For example, here, this graph shows the impact of the length of the prompt on the energy consumption. But further down, I noticed some missing visualizations. And also, we have some issues with overlapping visualizations when scrolling back up. So I asked Cursor again to fix these issues. Okay, so finally, I'm quite happy with this result. So now let's deploy this project to make it accessible to other people. For a simple static web app like this with only front end, Netlify and Verso are among the best choices. They both have quite generous free tiers for hobby projects and also quite simple to get started. So we just go ahead and push our project to a remote GitHub repo. For this app, I'm going to use Netlify just because I happen to have an account here already. And then on Netlify, once you've signed in, you'll be able to add new project. We choose import an existing project 
and we deploy our project with GitHub. You just need to authorize Netlify to access our GitHub account, and then we simply choose the repo that we want to use. I'll call this Storytelling AI Footprint, and just a few more clicks, and ta-da, our app is now being deployed and hosted online so we can share it with others. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it sparked some new ideas for your data storytelling project. And let me know if you tried it out. And if you want to learn how to code in Python, build AI applications from the ground up, and understand what's going on under the hood, I've built a program to teach you all the fundamentals of Python, machine learning, and AI. I'm so grateful for more than 300 people already joined so far and transformed their AI skills. So if you're interested, check it out in the description below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.